My bestie and I were talking the other day, and I grant you, we are old because we are Gen X. Uh, we were talking about how we are amazed by the videos that you see out there that people actually watch and get millions of views, like people playing games, for example. I'm like, why are you watching someone play Dungeons and Dragons when you can be playing yourself? Now, I can understand why you would watch a high level athlete. You may actually learn techniques and you may actually learn something that you could implement in your own game with other people. So I could see where that could be a fun thing because just like watching a poi artist where you could learn something by modeling what they do, they're watching the best of the best. We're analyzing this and we're thinking about, oh, this is a big shift in culture. Back when we were kids, we would much rather just be playing something. You wouldn't watch somebody play, you'd participate. Now we have the fine art of enjoying from the observer perspective. And I think as a result of that, when somebody is a new artist, you can completely fool people who just want to watch things in a way that you can't even possibly imagine because they don't know anything about it other than what they've seen, if they've seen it. And it's not like there's a prolific amount of fire dancing content out there. There really isn't. There aren't that many people that are followed by that many people. I think there's just that one girl that was on AGT and technically I feel like her act was more an aerial act that had fire than her as a fire dancer. And then there's the two uh, Cirque du Soleil artists that I know about who are who, who do fire acts as well, but they're, they do them at Cirque du Soleil. There's some videos online, but it's just not that, it's not prolific. As a result, as a new artist, you can do so little and get so much out of it. So when you, as an artist who knows what's possible, look at the field of people and the people that would be your colleagues or peers or mentors or people that would inspire you, you might be like, oh, I'm not very good. But that's, ignore that. It's irrelevant because you're dealing with muggles who don't know anything about anything, who would be very happy to watch somebody play D&D. Of course, they're gonna be happy watching you play with fire. That's even more exciting. That's like real life D&D, &D, right? Cause you know, you may have a fire mage in D&D. &D, now you're a fire mage in real life in front of them, entertaining them. So I think this is a, like a huge, huge thing that has shifted in culture. And I think it's really great for you. Like it's great for new artists. It's kind of not great for seasoned, skilled talent. But that also, now, now you come to the place which is the artist's quandary. Do I want to be a good performer? Do I want to be an incredibly masterful technician? And I think they're different skills. The reality is, I think being a good performer is its own skill, but I think that people who are technicians don't necessarily acknowledge it as such because they care about the prop manipulation aspect of it rather than the performance value of what's being presented. And I don't, like, I think both are great, I just know your average audience cares more about performance presence than they do masterful technique, unless it is the highest level of mastery that is obvious for them. But even then, you still need some element of moving the, moving the audience in a way where they can feel it and be moved by it or else they don't, why would they care? They just don't care if there's no reason for them. Like it's good to watch, maybe, but only if they can track it. And that's really tough the higher level you get because the higher level you get, the faster your transitions are and the more like, whoa, what did I just watch? Versus a buzzsaw, easy to understand. Oh, it looks like you're gonna set yourself on fire. It's very easy to comprehend the uh, potential danger, even though you are completely leveraging it as you're essentially an illusionist as a performer. What you're doing is you're creating the illusion of doing something that's dangerous, and, and something they can't do themselves. And I think that makes a, makes a difference. And I think that's also why it's been classified more as a circus art, which is unfortunate because as an instructor, I want more people doing it, but I think people think it's unapproachable because, ooh, I have to run, run off and join the circus as opposed to, oh, I could just go to a dance class. I think dance classes are approachable. I think circus arts are like, I don't know if that's dangerous. I don't know if I could do that. I think where you're at, you know more than enough technique to entertain people. I mean, you, you know way more than enough technique. It's not about the technique anymore. It's about how you present the technique and how enthusiastic you are. They want to be entertained. Let's, I mean, come on, if they're gonna sit there and watch somebody playing a game on the internet, they want to be entertained. When you come to the point, okay, should I invest in, 
should I invest in how I present myself as a performer versus investing in more technique? The answer is, in my opinion, always both. However, you wanna get your performance value if you're going to char try and charge money for it, I think you want to get your point performance value at the level that is equivalent of your technique at the, at, at the same caliber. So for you, where you're at, you might want to start investing in things like costuming for yourself that's more ornate and more high level as opposed to simplistic costuming. It's amazing how much your performance value goes up when you have a flashy costume versus like a casual one. And that includes good makeuping.